So again, welcome, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for this uh, Tuesday morning edition of the Tech Deacons Roundtable. Uh, my name is Eric Ellie. I am your digital minister for the Southern New England Conference. I, um, we created these uh, Tech Deacon Roundtables so that we can come together and support one another. And so I'm, again, as I said before, before we started recording, uh, it is nice to see everyone this morning. Um, Let's go around really quick for just in case there's some folks who are new um, and uh, introduce yourself, so your, your name, where your church is, uh, the name of your church. Also the, uh, your, the state that you're in because sometimes there's first churches and sometimes there's replicated names. So I found out uh, in New England. So, uh, you know, your name, your church, the state, um, where you're at in digital ministry. And uh, according to my screen, uh, Rich is up first. Okay. Hi, Rich. Oops, sorry. There's, oh, two, there's Richards. two Richards. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, Rich, Richard Chrisman. Hi. Um, I'm Rick Chrisman. I'm the interim senior minister at uh, the Elliott Church in Newton, Massachusetts. Um, we presently have a live online Zoom service at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings, and we're in the process of um, discussing uh, this live streaming option for when we regather. And I don't think we are foreseeing regathering until Labor Day. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Jane, would you care to go next? Yeah, Jane Claybaugh. I'm from First Congregational Church of Gardner, Mass. I'm um, one of the tech assistants at our church. We are doing virtual Zoom virtual live Zoom right now, starting to investigate the possibility of hybrid, but don't really have a time frame yet for that. Thank you, Jane. Uh, Rick Connolly. Yeah, I'm Rich Connolly from uh, First Church of Leverett, Massachusetts. And we're, we uh, worship by Zoom and we're, uh, we're going to move to hybrid. The choir is already recording. That's that's not hybrid, but that they do record, and that's yeah. so. That's where we are, and this we'll probably follow the state guidelines uh, closely after they allow us to open. Mm -hmm. So we're not sure when they open it, when we'll go hybrid. Okay, Wade. Wade, you're next. Oh, sorry. That's, okay. That's all right. So um, we did Zoom for six months or so and then changed to live streaming back in November. Then maybe uh, two months ago, we started hybrid services with uh, 12 to 15 people in the sanctuary. Uh, right now we're trying to, we're struggling with how to get our choir back in so they can sing or at least record something that uh, we can play back in the uh, in our live stream feed. It's the uh, First Congregational Church in Bethel, Connecticut. Thank you, Wade. Thank you for sharing. Andy, you're up next. Good morning, everybody. I am Andy Burr, and at the present time, I am the interim pastor of North Congregational Church in Middleborough, Mass. Up until February, the congregation was doing taped services and uploaded to YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. And starting in the middle of February, we started doing live Zoom broadcasts from the sanctuary. And we have set up uh, an Eventbrite uh, invitation system for people, for 10 people to come to the sanctuary for the service so I'm not preaching into an iPhone camera that there are actual people in front of me. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Eric, you're next. Hey, uh, good to see people. It's been a while since I've been here, so it's, uh, I'm glad I'm able to join. But um, I'm I, uh, from the Trinitarian Congregational Church of Norton, Massachusetts. We 
started out everything with just doing um, recorded um, when everything had to go um, remote. Um, slowly, we got the infrastructure together to go to um, streaming live. Um, and we were able to start doing that once. Um, and we started with a hybrid. It was like hybrid was sort of allowed at that point. So we had a, a minor hybrid with like a, just like a, a, a sign up genius for people to come to there. Um, when things started going, call it south again, uh, we went just a straight, um, I, we actually kind of went to a hybrid pre-recorded slash live. So what happens is, you know, our pastor does live and via the um, OBS, I'm able to put in some pre-recorded things. So the organ music, um, sometimes we have the choir uh, is able to sing where they pre-recorded their segments and melded together and all that. Um, I guess I'm, my, I'm married to the choir director and office manager. So between her and I, we, we work all this stuff out from a technical perspective. She does most of the actual video editing and all that type of stuff. Um, and I work on making sure it goes uh, live. Um, and uh, we pretty much do that to Facebook like every, uh, every week uh, right now. Um, so our pastor doesn't have to, um, you know, do thousands of takes of things. Um, the, uh, I think we're looking shortly after Easter to go back to a hybrid uh, based on where things are currently going. And when we do that, um, the organ music will be live again um, and we'll have limited people there. We're still not certain about um, being able to do singing uh, and that type of stuff, but um, there's at least one more planned choir, um, you know, multi-part thing. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Lorraine. Hi. I'm uh, Lorraine Russell. They, everybody calls me Lori. Lori Russell. I'm a deacon at the um, Hope Congregational Church. That's in the Riverside section of East Providence in Rhode Island. And um, we were totally unprepared for the COVID shutdown. And so we um, kind of struggled in the beginning. We just... Uh, basically went out and saw what everybody else was doing. And for a couple of weeks, we had to, um, you know, just watch services that other churches were either live streaming or had recorded. And there was an Easter service that the um, conference did that we had to partake in because unfortunately our pastor got struck with COVID. Um, mm -hmm. So... Once she got back, though, she she really got on it. She started recording and uploading her own services between her and the music director. So we were 100% recorded services. And then um, we planned on having a uh, in-person outdoor service um, for Easter, which that plan went south. So we're stuck yet again. We're, we're right now. The plan is to just record like we had been doing, and this time it would be including some guest uh, soloists. So we we're planning on recording it uh, a day or two before Easter, and then uploading it again to Facebook because we do not have the capability or the equipment in order to live stream. We are looking into it, um, but even if we do get the equipment, I'm not sure if we have the Wi-Fi or um, cell coverage that we would need to do that if we were inside the sanctuary, if, you know, it was inclement weather and we ended up having to go inside because even though we're not having um, the congregation there, we were still planning on being outdoors, to, you know, in, in order to have the soloist and the pastor there to do the service. So we're kind of still in flux less than two weeks before Easter. And then for long range, we're still, we're, we uh, have the name of a consultant that we have to have come out and actually look at the sanctuary in the church to see what setup we would need, um, estimated cost to low end estimated cost to bring us up to, you know, 21st century would be like a, about $8,000.
So we're, we're, you know, we're still working through it. We're nowhere near ready to, to do anything yet, but we got plans and that's why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Lorraine. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I'm, I pastor at a church at, uh, in uh, Western Massachusetts, St. Mark's uh, Episcopal Church in, in East Longmeadow. And uh, we are planning uh, to have, to hold a outdoor worship service on Easter Sunday. Our bishop uh, was pretty uh, spot on and saying, and very firm to saying, you know, no, no, no in-person Easter, Easter services uh, since uh, the, the thought would be that the, um, you know, you, we would get, you know, folks who are, um, you know, who may be visiting from out of town and that sort of thing. And the, there'd be a, of course, you know, the, the load would be higher. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I believe that we at St. Mark's will be going back into in-person, but I think we're going to try it, maybe. So I guess this is like the common, this is the common uh, uh, thing here. Um, we're not quite sure, but I, I think we're looking at Easter too, the second, the second Sunday of, uh, of Easter. So, um, so I offer you that. Uh, we will be pre-recording at the eight o'clock service, our standard uh, live stream service uh, on Easter morning and then playing that, uh, you know, and live stream that out, but also um, go and um, play that back um, on at a, our normal 10 a.m. service, uh, the time that we will be outside. Today, I wanna focus on something a bit different um, and I'll just spotlight myself here. Today, I offer the following uh, question um, in terms of um, digital ministry. And the question is, what might digital ministry look like apart from the principal Sunday service? Now, I asked that, and I'm going to put that also in the chat. Um, I asked that because um, most of us, you know, when we, when we envision what we're going, what we're doing in digital ministry, what digital ministry looks like in our context, we envision, um, rightly so because of COVID, we envision um, a solution that centers around the principal Sunday service. And for many folks, uh, that uh, solution um, may or may not fit with the financial situation that your church is, is currently uh, in. And so I offer this question as a, as a way to get us thinking a little bit outside the box, because I think um, if we, if we imagine what we can do, um, Monday through Saturday or Monday through Friday, that is, uh, that still retains the, um, the congregation that you've built, um, on a, you know, on the, um, on the Sunday by Sunday basis, but offer short form, uh, video that would be, um, you know, um, maybe 15, 20 minutes long, perhaps. Okay. Um, that would be a solution to bridge the time as we're going through, you know, a transition into hybrid. Or perhaps you may adopt this as your, as one uh, aspect of your digital ministry. So, um, so what do I mean by a service outside of your principal worship service? Um, and for that, what I'll do is I'll bring up on screen here a, um, a worship service uh, snapshot, a screenshot of our Facebook post uh, from last Friday. So this is a meditation uh, service that looks nothing like a typical Episcopal um, so I'm Episcopal, I serve in Episcopal Church, but it looks nothing like an, a standard Episcopal service. Um, it is, uh, the liturgy um, is very open. Uh, it is led by one of our uh, congregants, uh, Seal, who is, you know, who specializes in meditation and Reiki and has a passion for it. And I think that's a, that's a key there. But it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, someone who, um, you know, from your congregation. But as you can see from the from the uh, screenshot, um, the number of people reached 
was about 816, if I'm writing that correctly, because my teleprompter's uh, a bit away from me. And we have approximately 161 engagements. Now the engagements is the key, is, a, is the key uh, um, metric there, the 161 in terms of engagements. Engagements are actually the number that you would use in Facebook to count as a um, someone who actually participated. What that time is in terms of, um, you know, the length of time they were in worship with you, uh, that'll vary greatly. But I put that up there as this, so this is a 30 minute service. It used to be 15, but it's kind of gotten, you know, a little, um, little more uh, lengthy as we went on. Um, and you'll notice something about that post. You'll notice that the post has been boosted. So what we do uh, at St. Mark's is we define a geographic area, and we I think we def we're defining that as a geographic area that is approximately 50 miles radius of the church. And in our um, demographics and our uh, targeting with this, you know, with a Facebook ad, we are targeting folks who are, and I'll review some of the um, uh, keywords, into prayer, Christian, uh, meditation. Um, I believe this one, I believe Seal talked about chakras. So we, we included chakras in that, energy centers. Um, so again, it is something like completely, you know, completely different. Um, that was 50, five zero. Um, 50 mile. So we were reaching Worcester all the way around. And that, and that was a big, that was for this one. But usually we would do something. So I, thanks for asking that, Wade. Generally, we would do um, 15, one five, but we switched it up a little bit this time around and, um, and uh, actually went for a longer distance. So I offer that um, as a kind of a, a base for our discussion, uh, part of our discussion today, to to imagine what would um, worship look like. Oh, it, and it really, it, you know, in fact, it doesn't, you know, have to be worship. It could be, uh, you know, digital ministry in general. I know there's an Episcopal priest um, in uh, Westerly, Rhode Island, and uh, that that church there, Christ Church, um, they have a community leader come in. I believe it's. I think it's daily Monday through Friday um, at, at, at 12 noon. And they have, they, they actually, they, they um, you know, Sunil, Father Sunil will come in and, and interview uh, that person. And he gets quite a, he gets a lot of, a lot of uh, interaction and a lot of engagements on that. So like always, I, um, you know, I step back a bit because I know I've been talking a lot. Um, I'd like to hear what you, perhaps have to, um, what you've been wondering, you know, and, and in this, I, I think I have, um, one of the key parts about this is that this doesn't have to be expensive. Okay. So this would involve a cell phone on a cell phone stand. And for some of this, I mean, usually you've heard me or other, you know, tech folks saying you must hold the phone like this. You must hold it in, you know, in the landscape or in, in, in a landscape mode. But for some, uh, depending on what your format is, like if you're on TikTok uh, or if you're on um, Instagram Reels, it would be better to orient the phone um, in portrait mode. So you have the phone and you have a, in this case, this is a $10, I think it was $10 microphone um, from that I bought on Amazon. And, you know, comes in a little leatherette bag and it's really simple. It's a standard lavalier mic that you can attach to yourself, and it has a, you know, mic, uh, a plug that plugs directly into the uh, the cell phone, like so. So not overly complicated. And this, um, you know, this type of ministry model, in terms of, you know, in, in terms of within digital ministry, can provide that kind of that that bridge um, that you that you may be looking for. Um, also, uh, just a, um, a, a little factoid, that um, short form video, in other words, video that is not an hour long, um, you know, 15 minutes, 
perhaps 20 minutes. I know it, you know, I've said it before, uh, you know, with our case and at Friday night, we went from 15 minutes and now we're at 30. So we got, we got to watch a little bit. Um, but short term, short form video is best because people, when they're scrolling, when you, the idea behind digital ministry in, in within the context of social media is you want to stop the scroll. And then when you do stop the scroll, then you want to, you know, make it as short as possible and compact as possible so that people don't scroll out. So, so with that, I will unspotlight myself uh, and open up the floor to people who have some feedback. Yes, Rick. Hi, um, thanks, Eric. Um, we exchanged an email about this yesterday. I just wanted to get to the sense of the group too. I did appreciate very much um, the option to do something besides the, the expensive live stream. But um, I had a question for the other Eric Bressler, I believe, was it you that said that um, you're in the sanctuary um, with, uh, oh no, someone from Bethel, Connecticut, first uh, UCC, there are 12 to 15 people in the sanctuary. Um, does that come off acceptably? I mean, I presume that's a very small number of people for a very large group. I was only, uh, and we would have that same situation. And I wondered how that affects the, the worship dynamic and if the people um, watching the live stream are affected by that. Um, and then I want to come back to Eric Ellie after that to say that we're thinking very hard about not short form video, but short form audio um, and go um, a completely different direction. Anyway, so who was it that was from Bethel, Connecticut? That'd be Wade. Oh. Wade, would you care to speak to that? I, I believe you're muted. Oh, Wade, yeah, there you are. Can't hear you. I don't know what what is going on with uh, Zoom these days, but I, I find that space bar to unmute yourself works about a third of the time and it's very frustrating. Anyway, I, I didn't quite get, Richard, I didn't quite get the gist of your question. You were talking about uh, 15 or so people in the sanctuary, but what was the concern that you had? The concern is simply how does that affect the dynamics of worship um, when there are so few people in a large space? Do you find that it makes any difference? Maybe, you know, you have a, no. you know, the same performance, if you will, the same presentation you would anyway. Yeah, you know, it's, it's really hard to generalize on something like that. We've got a, 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 a I hope, a, a really different situation in that we've got a, a choir director, a music director that has got a compromised um, immune system and can't come into the sanctuary. For whatever reason, oh, right. and uh, that uh, that limitation probably overshadows everything else. Uh, mm -hmm. She sends in uh, six or seven pieces every week. They come in on an MP3 uh, file. I put some uh, pictures behind them and put some uh, lyrics on the, the hymns and make them into MP4s. And we play that, and it plays through a monitor in the front of the sanctuary. But to get to get to the point of your question, I think, is we've got, uh, we had 19 people in the room last Sunday. They're all so glad to get out of the house, to get to be able to come and see a few people. Uh, it's not a, a very big sanctuary. It's maybe 50 feet wide and 100 feet long. Classic old time uh, New England construction, but uh, we don't fill the room up in, in any sense, in any stretch of the imagination. But people are so glad to come that uh, they find it worthwhile. Now, okay. that said, we're, we're probably six weeks into this, so I don't know that we've got a trend established yet, but mm -hmm. it's working pretty well. Well, that answers my question. I was concerned about um, just having an empty, almost empty sanctuary. Thank you, Wade. What, okay. about, what about the audio idea, Eric Ellie? Well, let's go back to the other Eric who had his yeah. hand up. Oh. Well, I was going to say, when we were hybrid for a little while, we were very similar to what Wayne was talking about. We had, you know, only a handful of people attending. And, <laughs> and, you know, the, but people, even the people who watched remotely for going, like, they liked seeing people in the building. They liked 
um, you know, having the option when they could. So um, I wouldn't let it deter you, as you were saying, in any way to just start opening it up as you know, comfortable and as people are comfortable being able to come there. Um, and I did a similar thing with the audio um, segment where um, some of the stuff that I had to do was, you know, put out as a as an audio only in the sanctuary, even though we had the video available of the choir members. It was the video was streamed live. People in the in the building only heard the audio because I don't have a monitor up front to put it on. Um, so uh, but that still was receptive, you know, very well. And then when the people went home, they sometimes rewatched it. So they can see all the different people's faces doing the singing at the pictures. So, um, yeah, I just wanted you to, to know that there's other examples. <laughs> um, another example that comes to mind uh, pretty, uh, pretty quick for me is uh, a service. It's, it's Apple only at this point. It's an app called Clubhouse. And the neat thing about it is it is um, conversational. Um, now, I believe you can uh, set it up in a way that it, that will, you know, you know, almost like a webinar where people are muted, but I believe the, the goal of Clubhouse is to get people and bring people together, but only audio only. And it's, um, I seen this, uh, I believe about a month ago on CNET, and uh, they were stressing the fact that folks, some folks, for some, for some people, they are so kind of like burnt on, you know, going to work and working, um, um, you know, in, in Zoom meetings and stuff, and people have had it with video, that uh, some folks are appreciating audio only. Uh, yes, from Carol, it is a, is a, it is a Apple, it is a uh, Apple only product at this point. They are uh, porting over the encoding for Android, so they will be doing that. So I offer that. Anybody else? But yes, uh, oh yes, Carol, please. Um, yeah, we we had some conversation. We we've, we've been struggling with, you know, we've been we've been pre-recording all of our services and premiering them on Sunday mornings on YouTube, and um, we've been struggling with getting back into the sanctuary. We're gonna we're gonna have an outdoor service on Easter, weather permitting. Pray for good weather. Um, but, uh, yeah, but, you know, we've been struggling with, you know, what do we do for live, do we live stream? Do we continue to have, do we have a live service and pre-record another service? And, you know, we've just been struggling with that. And we have a, we have a group that's called the worship and music team, which is part of Deacons. And, uh, the, the subject of prayer time came up in our conversation and, um, talking about, you know, when you're live streaming, how do you, how do you make sure people's privacy isn't, you know, put out over the, <laughs> over on YouTube, over YouTube. Um, and so from that conversation, we talked about perhaps having a, a weeknight prayer time. And maybe that would be a, another way of having a digital ministry, have a, a prayer group. Um, so just another yeah, and again that that prayer group could be you know again something as simple as phone yeah and, and yeah. mic yeah. um what we do at a uh, and there there are some diocesan practices that we have to follow so we don't um and i'm speaking of my context at a at saint mark's yeah we do not use last names in prayer so we do we do collect prayer concerns through chat on facebook so we do not we do not um, say even though somebody may say pray, please pray for me you know or please pray mm -hmm. for you know my you know my son my daughter whoever my you know my friend mm -hmm. and may use a a last name we do not include that you know when we when we're at the pray dues right. and we're reading that back and that's part of the joys and concerns um, you know part of the pastoral prayer um, you know something we we call a, a concluding collect. We do not use the last names. We will not include them in there. Yeah. Even if I'm uh, going and another thing that boosts engagement is to um, welcome folks. Uh, so folks who have like said, "Oh, good morning, everybody," you know, and they're and they're typing in the in the comments, I'll read their names off as well. Mm -hmm. But I won't include their last names. Yeah. yeah. Now, 
the, and that's kind of, you know, it's, we, so we encourage folks just to use first names. Uh, the other thing you can do, which a couple of our churches in our diocese do, is we have a closed group. We have a prayer meeting group in the in some of our churches. So you build a group. You, you know, you have your you have your church page, and off that church page, you build a private group. Oh. And you know, so though, so in that case, you know, when you stream. You know, when you turn on your phone or you or you you start OBS, whatever you're using, whatever your context is, wherever you're at, mm. um, you point it to that group. Mm. No one, it's it's not it's not number one, it's not public, and two, the um, the that's in in that group, and in that, in the, and it could even be prayer prayer requests with you know that are just you know typed in, mm. um, in the, in the um, you know, in the uh, in, in post format, like you would see on you know any anybody's post, um, though those all that stuff that's in that group is contained in the group, so nobody can see it. Mm. So, and for that I, for that particular church, I'm thinking about it's it's actually worked well for them because it's they have, they have a, a password protect a password protected page off the website or something. And not even that. It's just a Facebook group that is that is locked. Oh, so, and you know, and you've probably seen these. Oh, so you go, oh, I'd like to join yeah. that group. Yeah, and yeah. then you click on join the group. And then it says, okay, someone will, you know, the, the moderator of yeah. this group will, you know, okay. review. Sometimes there's a question. You'll say, okay, join group. Yeah. And it'll say, this like, is a private group. Please answer the following question. Yeah. You know, what is, you know, yeah. you know, I think like some of them are, you know, are simple. Like, you know, who, who you know, uh, um, what building? What building do you worship in? What do you call that? And they'll say church, you know. And that that's just you know to, to keep yeah. the bots out. I missed that you know. said Facebook. I I get that now. Yeah. 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 So it's a closed Facebook groups. Mm. Good. Anybody else? Has anybody tried a ministry uh, outside of um, of Sunday um, outside the Sunday morning principal service? So we we haven't really done as much with like per se worship things, but we've had it uh, for what else is the church doing? So like we have a, um, a garden project where there's a spot in the church where there's a, effectively a public bar garden and we want people to come in and help with it and that. So we have effectively short go live and say, here's the status of it. If you want to volunteer, get a hold of this person, you know, that type of stuff. And they're able to show it and all those type of things. Uh, we've had things even like treasurers telling us how we're doing financially because of course over so COVID that's been a you know a concern or if we're having a fundraising mm -hmm. thing um we actually had to go digital with the with our um what do you call it again with our uh, annual uh, mm -hmm. holiday fair type thing mm -hmm. where we it's usually a big fundraiser for us and we actually went with a completely digital like store front thing which oh my god it's like we learned all sorts of stuff and some of this we'll probably use when we can not have it be a virtual because we'll do pre-orders for some things because it lets us know how much stuff we should have um, and things like that. So there's, there's a bunch of opportunities, I think there for people to engage. Um, actually for was it Ash Wednesday or whatever, uh, our priest usually is available like at the front of the church, you can come up and get your ashes, but he didn't want to encourage people to come and gather or do that. So he actually did a short thing of how you create your own ashes at home and yep. do it and um and be prepared then for the service so you can do you know do this ahead of time and, and do things so little things like that um we've been trying to do for engagement reasons and community reasons um the other thing we also do is after after sunday church we have a coffee hour um and it's host on google meet and we usually there's people who are there every week that are the you know, runners of it, but it's just a chat session, just like you'd have coffee hour afterwards normally, but now it's virtual. And um, that actually has been useful as well, uh, you know, in there. And we've occasionally done other ones, uh, other meetings like that, where for different purposes, we get people, you know, people are getting together and we facilitate it. Cool. Thank you for that. Yes, James. So a couple things uh, that we've been doing uh, last year with the uh, riots and the uh, uh, demonstrations that we had, we created a Black Lives Matter prayer walk in front of our church. And we published a URL so that people could come by from the general community. They could hit the URL with their phone and they could hear recorded 
uh, uh, prayers recorded, dis discussions from uh, black community leaders and so forth in our area. And they could meditate on that particular aspect of it while they're walking uh, in a labyrinth that we have on our property. But the beauty of it is you could do that from wherever. We published the URL so people could do it from home when they go on their own mock walk. Uh, so there's uh, similar type of things with labyrinths and meditation walks where you, we can publish a URL and people can do something like that. The other thing we did is at uh, Christmas time, we had a uh, live nativity scene, again, with a URL with uh, poems and music that people could come from the general community, see the, see the thing in progress, but then have the URL as an interaction behind the scenes. <clears throat> nice, thank you, James. Uh, are any of those URLs available? Could you uh, give us a sample? Perhaps, they, and perhaps they timed out, I mean, because since the event is over. I'll see if I can find one and send that over. Okay, thank you. Uh, going back to uh, Rick, uh, Rick Chrisman, did you have a platform that you were looking into in terms of audio only? Well, no, thank you for bringing that up. We hadn't gotten that far. Um, so far, we've only been doing a one audio thing. I record something I call um, the One Minute Minister every week, and we post it on the homepage of the website. And it's, it's of course, uh, um, truth to tell, it's never one minute. It's usually two to two and a half minutes. Nevertheless, um, some of our people are listening to it. I don't, we don't have any way of tracking if it's even being listened to, but it was an attempt to experiment with this audio non Sunday morning worship to see what, what it would be like. Um, and it's, um, it's an interesting discipline for me to write something that's in the 200 to 300 word range. And uh, I really like doing it. So I don't feel any compunctions about doing it, but I don't know how effective it is. What platform would you suggest using? Uh, when we shared uh, sermons back about four years ago at St. Andrews, we used SoundCloud. Sound? And then we would share the SoundCloud file over uh, Facebook. I, I wonder if we should be looking into some sort of podcast. Um, yes. Yep. I mean, usually I'm tracking and everything, you know, for them. And uh, I mean, I think SoundCloud might have podcast stuff built into it or something as well. I forget. But um, I haven't looked into specifics, but I know that, like, I would look at podcasting type of uh, platforms, if you could, that may be um, a really good way to do it. And then people basically subscribe to it too. So every time it's put there, they'll get a notification, they'll, you know, all that type of stuff. And, and it, it might be uh, very useful. Yeah, Eric, that's actually an excellent idea because the, um, you know, with, so you're, you're reaching, you're, you know, you're leaving, you're leaving the realm of Facebook and, and uh, YouTube, and you're actually going on different other platforms. And you're, when you're in, um, you know, to Eric's point, when you are podcasting, you are, uh, there are people who are seeking out those podcasts and will subscribe. So. What, um, wh where do I start? Do I, what, is there a, a platform or a company or a, a website that I go to? There is. Uh, Eric, do you have a, I, I could. I yeah, could, I was I just going to try to look something up, but I don't know how Tom, I, like, I just That's haven't right. done it myself, so. <laughs> right. Oh. Oh, thank you, James, for the, for the link. Thank you. Right, thank you. Yeah, I so I will, what I will do, um, in case, unless Jane has something uh, that she's going to offer. No, uh, not offer. I have a Go ahead. Okay. Um, I, will, I will get those uh, resources together for podcasting and, um, and make them available to us. And a podcast okay, is not necessarily, inter it's not interactive, is it? No. No. Okay. I mean, it's, it's interactive in the sense that, um, you know, the... Um, you know, uh, that folks are when, when, if you're leading a meditation, let's mm -hmm. say, you know, um, when you're in, when you're leading a meditation, the expectation is that the, you know, the folks who are, you know, are meditating with you 
won't be meditating, you know, they're, they won't be interacting, you know, they're, mm -hmm. you know, doing their thing. So I think, so I think something like meditation is kind of one directional, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, so I, I, you know, if uh, anybody else has any, you know, other things than that. I mean, the thing that I, even at the Friday night meditation and we have, again, you know, we don't have to, you know, you don't have to get as fancy as, you know, we, we are at St. Mark's. I mean, we, we're using the equipment there because it's there, you know, we don't, you don't have to do, you know, all the, all the stuff that we're doing, you know, for, for meditation on a Friday night. But I often wonder like, you know, if, if there was video, so it's, so it's, and I think Rich, uh, Rick may be onto this, you know, if there's video, then the complexity comes up a, a notch, the production value comes up a notch. And, you know, if you're simply trying to offer meditation, then I always think, and, and you'll see this if you go to, um, if, if, and I'll share the link um, in a few moments, you'll see that I'll, I'll, I, I go between the two prayer desks that, you know, myself and Seal sit at, and then just her. And I keep switching occasionally, not like every 15 seconds or anything like that, but like maybe over the course of, you know, three or four minutes, I, I go between both of them. Because I'm wondering like, okay, now that video is on, do people, those things need to change, you know, uh, in order to keep people's attention? Let's say, for example, let's say uh, James uh, has an organ recital. Do you just focus on, you know, the top, you know, four manuals? No, you would, you know, have some B-roll, you would do some pedal boards, you know, you would kind of mix it up just to keep the engagement up. But of course, that adds in all the complexity, you know. So, uh, you know, when we're talking audio only and podcasting, that's, you know, you know, it, it, it kind of takes that away, it takes, takes that stress and takes that, uh, you know, buy-in away from it, so. And yes, to your point, Rick, uh, Rick um, you know, as a, as a, a, a person who leads, leads worship and who just loves to talk, as you, as you can tell, um, try, getting things condensed to 12 minutes, to, you know, five minutes, to three minutes, to, you know, like I tried TikTok, you know, before coming on staff, you know, back in, back in October, getting it to a minute, you know, I don't know, at least this clergy person has a, you know, like, wow, I got to say all that in a minute, you know, and it, 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 it kind of puts you in the, you know, in a different, um, you know, discipline. So be, yeah. be concise and be, and be direct right. in which that I'll, I'll do that right now. <laughs> I was going to say for our, uh, uh, even our Sunday services, uh, we, we're down like 35 minutes is how they run. Uh, typically speaking, and we try not to go much longer than that for that kind of that same engagement reason. Now, it's a little easier, too, because you don't have the interactions and the switching because it's really just like, you know, really streamlined. And so obviously, when you bring people back in, you start having more um, interactions, it's going to get a little bit longer again. But then it's more interesting because there's more people, you know, so like, it's this interesting combination and balancing right. act. Right. Yeah, that's true. We've uh, found that in our services, we've actually had to add points of transition. So we use pieces of artwork in between like the scripture reading and the sermon and after the sermon, because it seemed like we were just going back and forth between things so quickly, it was disconcerting. So we had to even add some transition points for about 15 to 20 seconds just to give a nice separation. Yeah. And that's, in fact, I could, uh, I could bring up an example of that uh, at St. Saint, at Saint Mark's. Uh, Reverend Sandy, who some of you met, you know, last week at the, uh, last Saturday at the Tech Deacons Roundtable Workshop for Super Saturday, we run from one end to the, of the church, clear to the other end of the church to sing. We both sing live. And so we have, you know, a lit candle or incense or a stained glass, like something that, you know, Rob Fitzpatrick will pull up. Just so you're not here seeing us, you know, front. And I, I always had the, um, you know, the, uh, the idea of having like, you know, a really wide shot. You know me, I'm like all about tight shots, but having this wide shot and just, just to show like, you know, Sandy and I like buzzing past each other, you know, <laughs> trying to get to where we're going, you know, you know, kind of, kind of snaking around studio lights and that sort of thing. Um, yes, right. Can I get back in on on uh, James's point and uh, and Eric Bressler's because uh, it occurred to me when they were talking. Uh, being in the sanctuary for a service is very different uh, than watching it on the screen, and, but we're doing both at once in live streaming. And does that really work? I mean, 
you can afford in a sanctuary to have those breaks, don't, uh, don't we, James? Uh, you know, the, those transitions, those cues can be a little more spaced out. Uh, but boy, on screen, downtime is deadly. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah let me try to pull up that... Uh, that uh, yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to tackle that once once we're, we're full, full live. Yeah. I mean, yeah, my, right now I've, I've got the one camera, so we just kind of pan over to like the organ and then we kind of pan back over to the pastor and then pan to the person at the other thing. But when we did it for a short time, but like I said, it, it's, it's tough. I don't, I, don't, I don't even have the luxury of cutting between things. I also don't want to mm -hmm. make it too difficult for the people to run because otherwise, like there's two of us who can run the system right now. And it's a little more complex because we're popping back and forth between pre-recorded and non-pre-recorded and all that type of stuff. I want it to be, I want more people involved, you know, in case people can't be there and other things and I want it simple. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a balancing act. It yeah. Really I mean, I'd I would love to make it really complex and just have a really nice system and, you know, have a, you know, people on staff to do it. But I, there's no way that the church doesn't have the budget for that stuff. So <laughs> it's a lot of volunteers for us. <laughs> Right. Well, that's an interesting point both Eric's are making. It reminds me of uh, watching a mega church service. You know, they are a triple plus at the technical end and also at the performance end. Uh, you know, it's very snappy, um, no downtime, uh, but that that requires uh, engineers and uh, someone who writes a script that is very <laughs> tight. Um, but yeah. we don't do that. Our services are just not structured like that. Well, I'd say even for like when we were transitioning between the live and non-live, we went very early on that like um, my Pastor Bernie didn't know when he was on or when he was going to go off. And so we started having to do it where like I'm up there and I have to like put my hand like this towards him. And he's, you know, he's watching for me to give him a signal right. that he's on or off right. or whatever. And it was like, oh, right, of course this makes sense, right? Like, I know this from doing this stuff in the past, but, like, you don't think about it, right? And so he was sitting there, and, you know, he might start going for his water glass or something, and, like, oh, that's not good, you know. Or, or it comes back, he suddenly like, looks surprised, like, oh, it's my time to talk again, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah. It's, it's, these are the fun things that you, 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 you run into and you notice, and you're like, oh, we can make this better, and, yeah, I, I think it's funny. I mean, I, I, even looking back at some of them, we had some technical difficulties with some of them. We've had mic problems, you know, whatever goes on. And we can watch as our as quality of certain things have improved and other things we still haven't learned. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that would uh, be helpful is if you create a plan or an actual uh, a document, if you go through yeah. your service, yeah. uh, um, take this from like a, a stage production, all right, a play or, yeah. you know, and so you actually have a plan for who, what goes on when, and when does that stop, and what happens next. And so this way here, you can kind of flow it a little bit easier than a, a sudden awkward cut. Yeah, I posted a different kind of question on the chat line. Oh, let me let me check that. Sorry oh, discrete that. lights at pulpit, not mm -hmm. big lights box lights yeah we have big box lights but mm. for in person that's that's not a good idea we'll use them probably on the side and so i'm trying to figure out how to have appropriate lighting at the pulpit all right we have a quite experienced minister i've said that before who is pretty high tech to start well, he's a very high tech end user but for the audience sitting in the Pews, the big box lights have to be, can't be close to the pulpit. So I'm just right. looking for ideas or brands or any leads you have. So the, uh, um, we are, it's good that you brought that up, Richard, because we are um, faced with that as well at St. Mark's. We have about four <coughs> studio lights um, in front of what we're in, in front of the, um, you know, congregation. We also have cameras. Now we know um, that for this transition time back into the space, <coughs> we are we are saying, and we're kind of you know educating the the congregation 
and letting them know that you will see lights, you will see cameras, because our cameras are not PTZ cameras. I don't talk about PTZ <laughs> cameras all the time, but these are stationary cameras on tripods. They're not moving, you know, at least not for the first, you know, a few weeks that we are in, in worship together. Um, so we have, you know, we've said to folks, you know, it's, the church is not going to look like the same church that you left yeah, you know, I, I, uh, back in March. But yeah. I get your point with the box lights. And I think one of the things that we went, we moved from box lights to LEDs. And, and what LED kind of lights, LEDs? Um, let me bring that up. In fact, in I, other words, are there strings? They come in a string or I just. Oh, no, these are these are um, these are studio lights. Okay, for, LED um, studio lights. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and these LED studio lights cast more light out. Yes. And uh, you can pull you can have them back further then. So you don't have to be like right on right on the subject. Okay, so, but they come in the big box shape, or they're uh, no. Smaller? They're um, here. Let me just. They they are smaller. They're probably. And mm -hmm. I don't know what size box you're using, but let me just uh, let me bring that up here really quick. Um, I find it interesting you guys use the box lights and stuff because I I'm just using the house lighting. Um, I think my video suffers slightly for it, but I also don't have the highest end video equipment. But uh, <laughs> But I, yeah, I, I just, I just go the route. Um, it looks the natural light and the natural look, right. and, and and that from it. And uh, I don't try for the television production quality, which that's a tough call too, though. Um, you know, for things um, on it because you don't want the people remote to suffer too much. But I guess since I never went into the higher quality, I don't have to worry about disappointing them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. And I think so. I one think of the that's things why I pushed. Go on, go on, go on, James. Uh, so one of the things you can see some uh, relatively inexpensive lighting solutions by going to Sweetwater. Uh, yeah. It's a mm -hmm. musician's uh, yeah. uh, clearinghouse and they have a number of different things out there. I mean, you can get fog and all sorts of stuff that you want if you want to do something crazy, yeah. but they do have some m modest type of lighting which is you can put back a little bit farther yeah, and it would right. add some nice uh overall lighting to this this uh to the space thank, thank you i've dealt with sweet water before we we have a system installed uh, by professionals far younger than i am uh and they use the box lights that work extraordinarily well but as i've indicated we already know that they're really intrusive and because right. of their size we all we already know that in, the other, in, in other words telling the congregation they know they've seen pictures and they go no wait a minute that's way way too big <laughs> it's well, let me because of the, this here because the choir you. because the choir records at social distancing the mm -hmm. the the attendees on zoom have already seen the box lights i mean that's not news to them Right. Thank you. So this is this is what we're using at St. Mark's. So this is, these are lights that are placed off the side. Uh, can you the scroll that aisles. so I can get the name? Oh sure, yeah, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Yep. There we go. New, 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 newer. <laughs> yeah, newer. 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 Advanced. Uh, yeah, I got it. Thank you. Eric, you indicated uh, at, at uh, Super Saturday that you were going to talk to Alter Live this week. Yes, in fact, they're. And, um, I'm meeting with them in two hours. Okay, I mentioned because um, it, uh, that's of interest, and if you mm -hmm. going, do you know whether you're going to do it next week? Tuesday or even tonight, and I, in which case I would that is go over it if I, I would attend. I, you don't have to commit to it. I'm just trying to find out where you are. With right. So, so what I'm uh, meeting with them today to collect information. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to welcome them into one of our technique and roundtable discussions and let them present their, their product. Uh, okay. And we'll get a notice. Um, what's that? Yeah. You'll you, you get plenty. Of, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, okay. we'll schedule out a, a month right. or so. Thank you. Thank you all for your time. Yeah, no problem. 
I uh, and speaking of time, I want to be mindful of time and mindful of the time that we have together and mindful of your time. It is a little past noon, uh, so I don't want to keep you, um, especially as we come upon the lunch hour. So, is there any other questions that we that we uh, that you burning something you want to share with us that we didn't cover yet? Yes, Carol. I just want to jump back to um, our conversation about uh, interactive kind of sharing uh, ideas. And well, it's too late for this year, I guess, but for Ash Wednesday, we had actually had people from our congregation packaged little little ashes in little cups with a, with a prayer card. We left it at the church um, in front of the church in a bin, waterproof mm -hmm. bin, and people could pick them up and and we had our online, we had our online, um, you know, YouTube service mm -hmm. and people could administer their own ashes. Um, then also Monday, Thursday, uh, we're doing a Zoom service, Tenebrae. Mm -hmm. Typically what we do oh. is we set up a table in the sanctuary and do a Tenebrae service around a round table. But um this year we're going to do it. We're all going to sit around the Zoom table and do our um, our tenebrae service. And what mm. you said about, I think it was James said about um, stage directions. I'm writing the bulletin and including stage directions, uh, especially keeping people muted during. It's a more somber, solemn service, so we want to make sure there's no, you know, interruption kind of things that break the mood. Um, so I'm writing the entire service uh, with stage directions. Um, nice. A couple of other ideas were um, Holy Humor Sunday, which is the Sunday after Easter we have. Uh, and last year it was online. And we had people um, send in video, little video clips of jokes or song. I did a little song, a little funny song about... Uh, about it and um so we had people send in you know different things about that also we have we used to have um our opening gathering music our our music uh guy bruce who was here once um he used to do a song called uh i forget how it goes now but there was a part in the song that went yes lord like that and uh and we had people send in video clips, each, people doing little clips of people going, yes, Lord, <laughs> and mm -hmm. their kids and all that stuff. So, you know, we had people sending in different stuff and had, was, there were families that did it and, you know, kids. And it was just a, a way to get people involved in, in the service. We also did the, uh, the interactive uh, Advent calendar where every single day mm -hmm. of Advent, we had a new, um, a new video only pay for what you need with Liberty Mutual. What? <laughs> the Liberty, Liberty Mutual, Mutual ad is somebody's unmuted. So Liberty Mutual, yeah. Mutual ad sneaking in. Wasn't me. But anyway, so we did the uh, the Living Advent calendar too, where everyone sent in a, um, a little video of, you mm -hmm. know, some something to do with Advent, a prayer, a song, or whatever. So mm -hmm. just some ways to, because we're not in person, getting people to to you know get involved. That's all. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Carol. Anybody else? One last thing you want to share? Okay, then, folks, good to be with you again this week. Uh, we'll see you in, in two weeks uh, for the morning uh, session, or if you want to join us in the evening, uh, that'll be uh, next week, next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Till then, be kind to one another, and most importantly, be kind to yourself. Take care. Have a good one. Enjoy the warm weather. Thank you, Eric. No problem. <laughs>